All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about knives and sort of knife safety. Uh, this is all in prep for a video where we're going to cut a little bit of meat and make a stock. So, uh, basic idea again, the premise being sort of using what you have. So let me draw your attention first to kind of these knives that are over here. These are old family knives of my wife. Uh, here's a fillet knife that's in a sheath. Uh, it's in a sheath for a reason because uh, they kept these very, very sharp. You see how the blade is sort of narrow. You may be able to notice uh, in the video the slight curve and angles. Something else I want to show you. You'll notice the flex in the blade. It's thin. Uh, they call these fillet knives because you're using these generally on fish to fillet and, and having been a, a fishmonger uh, you use the bones of the animal and you would just slide right down and you could get the feel for it eventually just in your fingertips where you knew exactly where you were and what you were doing. You could see inside with your knife. Uh, you know, any of you that do uh, any fishing, it's the same idea. You can feel through the line what's going on at the end of your line. and. With a knife, it's no different. It becomes an extension of your hand. Here's an old, uh, what we call, pig killer knife. Uh, obviously, we live in a small place and don't have any pigs, so we don't kill any pigs with this. But again, an old, old family knife, whatever's useful. Uh, something I want to point out, you'll notice how the blade goes all the way to the very end of the knife, and the handles are just put on the ends. These handles may rot and break, but the blade will always be intact and you can do things with handles uh, to make them yourself uh, if necessary. I'm going to carve your initials at it like my Yeah, carve did. your initials, that's right. William Harris <laughs> coming at you. Here's another old uh, Harris knife. Notice it's just a, a simple, notice how the tang doesn't go all the way to the back. Again, just something, but the principle that we're talking about here is using what you got and what you can get. So. This is actually a pretty useful knife in a lot of ways. Here's a couple knives my mom picked up for us. Notice what you have, that blade all continuous all the way to the back. These are kind of especially nice. These were maybe $30 knives or so. Uh, back to the fillet knife. Remember the flex in the fillet knife? You've got a little bit, but not nearly as much in this blade. This is what we call a paring knife. We get a lot of use out of this in our house uh, because it's so small, uh, frankly because it's a pretty decent knife. Uh, it's just easy to move around and get around inside of things. Uh, this group over here that you see is actually part that comes with this block. Uh, this is what they call a steel. Uh, steels are not actually a sharpening device so much as they... Uh, they straighten out the tip of your blade. When you're cutting with a knife, the surface will twist and bend. Uh, is what a sharpening steel is doing is just bringing that blade back to an even place. Uh, from what I've been told, you're really not supposed to do it more than maybe once or twice. I kind of am in the bad habit because I like the sound of it, you know you'll do it a little bit more, but it's really not necessary. There's no steel or, or anything coming off or flaking uh, from the steel, but it's always a good idea to kind of wet your blade when you're done. Maybe just clean it quickly. If you use a stone, um, you do get grit that comes off. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you're you sharpening on a stone. Right, you definitely but, want to run it underwater. Absolutely, yeah. That uh, oil is recommended uh, also, but with this, uh, just uh, wet the surface and give it a quick clean afterwards, but you don't have to worry about things falling, uh, flaking or falling off. This is what they call a bread knife. You can see this serrated end, but they can be useful for other things. You see we get a lot of use out of it, a broken tip and, and chewed up. Uh, this is sort of a, a chef's knife, if you will. Uh, this is sort of, uh, if you had to have a knife, this is probably the thing to have in the house, frankly. Because, again, it's so useful. It has a little bit of flex. Frankly, uh, you can fillet a fish with this, uh, if you know what you're doing, with as much ease, frankly, as you could. I never liked soft blades. 
I found them to be too hard to work with. I preferred blades that were a little stiffer, like this. Um, and that's a good point. You want to use what feels good in your hand, especially when you're talking about a sharp blade. I don't like that one. Um, I prefer using the paring knife for everything because mm -hmm. it, that's what feels good in my hand. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's all a lot of a lot of cooking is your personal preference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great for carving meat. Great for chopping vegetables. If you had to have one thing, something along these lines. Sometimes I see them with a more of a a, a dull edge to them and not a point. Either one, frankly, works. Uh, this, I'm not even honestly sure what they call this style. Uh, this is kind of your typical meat cutting knife. You're almost sort of one-stop shopping. A little bit of flex, sort of a medium flex into it. Uh, but again, just something smaller. And then here again, we've got something more or less along these lines, but a very, very flexible. Uh, this is just kind of a showcase of what we have more than anything else. And again, keeping it on the idea of uh, using what you have or what you can get. Uh, you could find things like this at a second-hand store uh, and buy them probably relatively cheap. You could find things like these at Walmarts or places, Kmarts or, you know, sort of discount shopping places. Pick up something like this for maybe $20 or $30 and, and really you can get a lot of use out of it. And again, just remember, look for something where a blade, uh, the metal of the blade goes all the way to the ends of the handles because that's just going to offer you a better product really in the end. Um, and you can get more life out of that because the handles may break, but you can always replace those. Just a note on um, the big fillet knife that's in the sheath. Well, actually, it's two um, two notes. The you can see um, actually the brand name on the uh, sheath. That's a case knife. The ha um, the knives that we had growing up and that my mom still has at her house are case knives. They're um, I think my dad said that he, um, that was a gift from him. He gave me that one. And, um, I think he got that from a hardware store. Uh, that's where he bought all the knives that we had when we were growing up and were used for 35 years so far. Um, and they've never broken and they've always, um, held an, an edge to them. Um, also David mentioned, you know, if it has a sheath, keep it in it. Um, even if you buy a really cheap knife from like the bait shop down the street if it comes in a sheath you better keep it in there because those hold a sharp blade typically and they will cut your fingers so you just need to be really careful anything else on the knives themselves nope uh, knife safety is sort of coming up next a little bit with uh, what we're doing with the food but one quick pointer uh, always cut away from you or towards the table and an important thing with your fingers uh, if once you've made your initial cuts, you always try to keep your hands like a claw, keep your knuckles out so that your the knife is on the edge of your knuckles but never catches you on your fingertips. Uh, just an important point in general, but we'll point more of that out and you'll see as we as we move along.